Hey man, say man, another beautiful day, man. It's Sunday, so you already know that your boy had to jump back in here with another episode of this Flight Lounge. Now, if you listened to the last episode, I kind of told y'all that your boy was about to be going out the country and that I might tap in with y'all here and there just to kind of let y'all know how it was going, what I was seeing, what I was doing. But your boy was mad busy, so unless you tapped in with my Instagram story and stuff like that, you really didn't get a, you know, a sense of what I was doing. But your boy had a blast. I ended up going to Europe. I have been waiting to go to Europe, I'd say for at least 10, 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of expensive to go over there. So, you know, every time I thought like, oh, I'm about to go right now, something would magically appear. And then your boy didn't end up going until now. Like a few months ago, I was going online, kind of looking over stuff, trying to figure out like, oh, where's the next place I want to go? And I ended up finding some tickets that would take me from here to Paris and then I flew out of Amsterdam. So I ended up seeing four different countries while I was out there. Now I hit, I landed in Paris, I went out to Belgium, I went out to Germany, and then I had to touch down in Amsterdam and do what it do, you feel me? But nonetheless, like I said, I had a real good time. I will say that that was some life changing stuff right there. Just going out there, seeing the different cultures, tasting the food, listening to the music, seeing the people just in that everyday, you know, environment. And it, it inspired me because I've been saying that I wanted to move to Europe forever now, you know what I mean? So not only was this a vacation, this was a time for me to go out there and see if this was something that I would really want to end up getting myself into. So I took my girl, I took my son, just to kind of get a feel if this is something that they might like. And was I tripping? Am I just like, oh, I want to go to Europe. It's going to be so great. But nah, man, I would definitely say that that was, that was what I was expecting. I had a great time. I wish I would have had another two, three weeks to be out there. I would have hit a bunch more countries, but nonetheless, Man, if you ain't been to Europe, you got to go out there and go get those experiences because you only get one life. So it's like you need to go out there and really go see what the world got for you because it's such a big place. You never know if the place that you at is the place that you're supposed to be. But yeah, man. So y'all already know that I like to give a little, you know, a little motivation, a little spiel, if you will. So this week, I'm going to just say, I don't know who this is for and it could be for you. You know what I mean? But stop holding on to relationships and friendships with people simply off the rip that, oh, that's been the homie for 10, 15 years. That's Brody. That's day one. Woo, woo, woo. Because, you know, it's great to have those type of friendships. But when you get older and you start elevating, not everybody that you started with is who you're going to finish with. And you're going to start noticing that in your circle. Like, for instance, if you are an artist or a, a rapper or an, even an architect, when it's time to grind and you know what I mean, you trying to bounce off opinions, there's only certain people that you can really call and really get some, some feedback and get some motivation from. You might call out to some people that you claim is your day one and they'd be like, oh, bro, you know, the little, we, we, I'm about to go to the function, go kick it with the little bitches and shit like that. Or, oh, when it's time for you to put your stuff out and you promoting your stuff, there's going to be people that's going to, you know, share it on their story, share it on their wall. And there's going to be those same homies that I'm talking about that's going to be like, oh, nigga, I ain't trying to, you know, help you promote that. Check this video from this other nigga. This is what I like. And that's cool. You know what I mean? But when you're really serious about your craft and your goals and getting to the next level, you can't be spending too much time with those kind of people because time is the only currency that you don't get to see a balance from. You know what I mean? You don't know how much time that you really have. So spending your time with people who want to go out there and go party and drink and get high and just be around females all day. Yeah, that's cool if that's the goals and the stuff that you like to do. And every now and again, you know, I would say that it's necessary to go out there and enjoy yourself and turn up and do all those things. But you really got to start looking in consideration who got your best interest in mind. Because sometimes when you're trying to elevate it's going to cause you to separate. And sometimes it's going to be hard for you. Because like I said, some people is like, oh man, that's been my boy or that's been my girl for, you know, 10, 15 years. And you know, it's going to be hard for you to do that. But if you want to get to the next level and you want what's best for you, your family, your loved ones, and you trying to start that generational wealth gap that you might have in your family, it's going to take some separation so that you can focus and really figure out what you need to do so that you can get to where you're trying to go because everybody's not going to be on the same path. And it's important that you get and you notice those type of people right from the start because 
they're gonna take you down with them. I got homies that's, you know what I mean, locked up 20, 25 years, and I'm not gonna see them until I'm 50, probably walking around. And then again, I might not even live here, so I might not see them, you know, uh, again. But hopefully, you know, they're doing well. And, you know, I want them to succeed just as much as I want myself to succeed. But sometimes the people that you with, you're not going to su succeed together. So you need to do what you got to do to make sure that you succeed. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, I'm not trying to dwell and go too much into detail on like that because I'm not saying that you got to cut people off and never talk to them again. I'm just saying sometimes it takes you to show love from a distance so that you can figure out who you are and what you need to do because you only get one life. So you need to make sure that you live that life to its full potential and not be wasting time because you got memories and shit with people that's not trying to see you get to where you trying to go. So yeah, man, I'm gonna leave it at that. And you know what I mean? Hopefully that's that's a little bit of motivation because I know everybody goes through this and these dilemmas are like, oh, is that really my homie? Or should I cut him off or anything like that? I'm not saying you gotta be like, fuck you for life. But I'm just saying, handle your business before you putting these parties and these people in, in, in a big position in your life. Because not everybody want to see you win. Some people that's, you know, showed up to the game, they don't want you to win. They just want to see if you're going to make it. And you got to show them each and every day when you get up that you him or you her and you you gonna make it happen regardless if they stand in there or not so yeah i'm gonna I'm I'm get off that now because i got some topics of the week for y'all and i feel like i got some pretty good ones so the first topic y'all already know is the movies of the week now i've been seeing a couple movies and there was one in particular that i would say for at least a month now that kind of been grabbing my attention it was that 1992 with uh tyrese in it now i like i like baby boy i like jody joe and so when I seen that Tyrese was going to be in a movie and Snoop Dogg was going to be basically the director, you know, he came up with the idea. I thought it was going to be an excellent movie. So as soon as it hit the theaters, you already know that your boy had to see what it do. So I ended up checking it out and it was just all right. I'm not going to say it was the worst movie. I'm not going to say it's the best movie, but I'll say it was a decent movie. I would probably rate it all of like a six and a half when I go see it again. Mm, maybe down the line it's not something that i will rush to go back and go see um when i was looking at the commercials i kind of thought it was going to be you know based off of the aftermath and watts uh the rodney king beaten because that's kind of what it showed on the uh the, the the commercial but when you really watch the movie you see that it's a plot twist in there because it's basically about two fathers and one father is trying to rekindle the relationship with their son. And the other one is trying to hit licks with his son and trying to, you know, get the money so that he could be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm set free for the rest of my life. I don't really got to go to work. So when they hitting this lick, it end up, you know, getting interrupted and some things start shaking and some people start getting snatched up. That's not supposed to be part of the program. And yeah, man, it's all around like a, like a little, you know, I'm gonna say a little bit of action, a little bit of suspense. And it was decent. You know what I mean? I just didn't feel like the acting was up to par. It wasn't like no, no, no Denzel or no, no Brad Pitt or nothing like that. This was Tyrese, Jody Joe, you know what I'm saying? It was just okay. You know what I mean? It was kind of reminding me of like, if you ever seen the movie Waist Deep, it's that kind of, you know, level of acting. It was just okay. You know what I mean? So it wasn't horrible. It wasn't great. If you like Tyrese, if you like Snoop Dogg, and you just simply want to check it out because you've seen the previews on YouTube and stuff like that, I would definitely say go check it out. I'm not going to say it's the best movie, but if you like a little bit of action and, you know, some shit from Cali, you just want to support, make sure y'all go check it out. It's in theaters now. You could probably get it on the matinee. If you go early to the movies, go see that thing for like five, six bucks. So yeah, 1992, you interested? Check it out. Now, the next topic that I got for y'all is the music of the week. And usually I try to get on here and I give y'all like the the newest music, whether it be a single, whether it be an EP, whether it be an album, whatever I'm about to probably listen to that week, I usually tap in and let y'all know, yo, this is what I think is hot. This week is gonna be a little bit of different because I would say that over this week, Atlanta lost a legend. Now, this is somebody that probably came into the game like 10 to 12 years ago. You know what I mean? And if you don't know who I'm talking about, RIP to Rich Homie Quan. If you're not familiar with his music, he was an Atlanta rapper that came out, you know, when, when Migos was dropping, when um when like Future was starting to bubble and stuff like that. And he put out hit after hit after hit. The first song that I heard from him was that type of way, and that kind of grabbed my attention. I actually ended up when I was when I was first starting off rapping and stuff, I ended up jumping on that beat because I was like, oh, this shit is hot. 
So I ended up jumping on the remix of that, you know, um, I think I called it Every Day. You know what I mean? If you look through my catalog, you might be able to find it. But yeah, I ended up jumping on that. And I always kind of stayed tapped in to what they was doing or what he was doing. And, you know, that's not the only song that he had. He had like uh, Walk Through. He had that Fuck Out My Face with him and Thug. He actually had a lot of songs with Thug. Um, the first song that I heard from Thug was actually that, um, that My Lifestyle, which Rich Homie Quan is on. And that's what kind of like grabbed my attention to listen to Young Thug. You know what I mean? I know a lot of y'all saying screaming free thug. So that's probably one of thugs first real like I'm locked in. When you think of Rich Homie Quan, you think of him and thug. They bond. It was real close. They was homies. Unfortunately, they ended up falling out. And I know thug is hurting. You know, even though he was mad, that was his man's. And I know he always going to have those memories. It's crazy, too, because on Quan's last interview that he did, probably about a week and a half ago, they asked him, is there any chance that there'll be any music between you and Thug? And he was like, you know what? I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say yes. It's basically a conversation that me and him, we need to sit down and hopefully we can get past what we went through. And yeah, man. So that was the last time he really did an interview and spoke on Thug. So hopefully, you know, Thug get out. Thug, you know what I mean? He, he, got, he got the music on the hard drive. I don't know if he would want to drop and get a people because you know we still wanted to hear it. I don't know if it's going to happen, but somebody got the hard drive and I'm just hoping that Rich Homie got a lot of music on them hard drives that he could bless us with because he was coming with banger after banger after banger. And I would say my favorite song from Rich Homie, it ain't one that you was hearing in the club. This was that grown and sexy, that Milk Marie. If you ain't never heard that Milk Marie, that was that that was that was real thug passion, that real thug in love, you feel me? That, that, that fell in love with it. That was my shit. I know that song word for word. Actually, when I heard that he passed away, that was the first song that I pulled up. I had to re-put it on the playlist. It's already on the playlist, but I was like, hey, put it on, put it on there again just so that it's popping up and I can bang that because I want to, I want to, you know, keep supporting, keep listening. But if you one of those people who wasn't supporting, who wasn't liking them, you feel me? Then then don't try to get that new energy and be, oh, I was a, I was a fan. I remember that song a long time. No, 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 no. Keep the same energy that you was having, but for those who, who loved and enjoyed the music, Make sure y'all run up them streams for that man. You know what I mean? I know it's going to help his family out. And that's at the end of the day, that's all us artists are trying to do is just support our family and do the things that we love. You know what I mean? So once again, our Peter Rich homie Quan, you know, condolences to his family and condolences to Atlanta because y'all lost a real life legend. And I just hope y'all can see that tomorrow ain't promised. Tomorrow ain't promised. You got to get out there and you got to live your dreams every day because tomorrow your dream might be over and you don't get a second chance to do this shit. So make sure y'all go out there every day, live your dream because I know that's what Quan will want y'all to do. You feel me? Now, I know y'all been waiting to know what I'm talking about for the treat of the week. Now, I told you, you boy. Oh yeah, Tip. I had to go out to, to Amsterdam and see what that tree was like. I always see like, Oh, this is what they got for the tree. This is where the cup is, the cannabis cup and all of that. But I ain't never smoked no real deal uh, Amsterdam tree. So when I touched down there, it was only right that your boy had to jump in there and kind of check out what they had to offer. Now, I got a strand. My girl got a strand. My strand was called Kush Family. I ain't never went to any dispensary and seen one called Kush Family. I mean, if you if you tried Kush Family before, let me know in the, uh, the comment section or hit me up on the Instagram. Y'all already know you can reach me on Instagram as always at Jolen01. That's J-O-L-E-N-01. Tap in with your boy and let me know if you ever heard of Kush Family. Now, ooh we. That Kush family that I got when I went into the dispensary and I told them that I was looking for that loud pack from the Outback. If you got that, I need that. They automatically was like, you got to get this one. Dude was like, I'm confident. If you smoke gas, you got to get this one because this is the one that everybody come back and they like, oh, I need some more of that. Now, I only grabbed like a, a 1.5 or something. You know, I was just trying to taste it. You know what I mean? Because if it was swap, I was going to be pissed off. Plus, they was kind of taxing for the tree. Now, if you're looking for some mild pack, like they had a system, five stars. If you're looking for some one star, some one and a half star, they got it for 10 all day. But once you start creeping into that three star, four star, oh yeah, tip, they need an extra six, seven, eight dollars on that motherfucking gram. So I was like, you know what? I might find something from somewhere else. So let me just grab this for now, my nigga. That shit, when I hit it, it had a nigga like, whoo, 
like Ric Flair because this was some power. Me and my girl ended up rolling a J a piece because I don't know what it was, but I don't feel like they smoked blunts there. I mean, I seen a couple little roaches on the ground, but as far as when I went into like the stores and stuff like that, I wasn't seeing a whole lot of um, blunt papers. I even asked one of the people like, hey, do y'all sell swishers here? And they looking at me like, what the fuck is a swisher? You know what I mean? So I ended up rolling joints. Y'all know that I'm not a big fan of the joints, but I ended up rolling those. Me and my girl blew it. And if you ask her, she'd tell you that Kush family, it put her ass in a chokehold. You feel me? She was like, whoo, I ain't never, I ain't never felt this motherfucking high before. And it could be because, you know, that shit is a little bit different. It could be because we wasn't really smoking a whole lot when we was out there, but it was definitely some fire. And as far as the one that my lady had grabbed, off the top of the dome, I don't really remember what it was called. You know what I mean? I just know it wasn't like the Kush family and it was just some cool, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. I, like I said, I only tried two, so I can't be like, oh, they got the best tree I ever tried out in Amsterdam. I don't know, you know what I mean? But what I can tell you is that the stuff that I tried was some power, you know what I'm saying? So if you out in Amsterdam, make sure that y'all checking out the tree and let me know if you've ever been to Amsterdam and what kind of tree you tried because it's off top, I'm going back. You feel me? I, I was with little man, so I didn't get to move and groove how I planned to, but I definitely would say, hell yeah, they have some good shit. So next time I'm out there, I'm going to be in more coffee shops. I'm going to be, you know, walking around with my J puffing on the red light district because I went over there too and, oh, you know, I already know what I seen over there. You know what I mean? So hopefully next time I get a real uh, Amsterdam vibe to it and I can really go around and do what it do like a real Amsterdam person, you know what I mean? Because there was people out there smoking their joints. I couldn't really, you know, participate because I was with my youngin. But yeah, it was definitely some power. I definitely had a good time in the weed. I'll be back for that shit. Now, the next topic that I got for y'all is the hustle of the week. Now, I'm I'm gonna just say off top, this is a hustle that I'm trying to, you know, get better at and really start succeeding in is the YouTube. Now, a lot of the times when I do the podcast for y'all, y'all notice it's only audio only, but Moving forward, I would like to be in the studio more and just recording it for y'all so that y'all can, you know, see my face. When I say I'm in the studio really working, y'all know this is the studio, you know. You can tell I got my speakers, I got my keyboard, I got my other keyboard down there. So I'll be in here cooking all of the time. So I want y'all to be able to tune in each week, see what I'm doing, tap in with me on the YouTube, and just grow my channel because I know that I have a lot to offer from the clothing, from the music, from the podcast, even from the book. Books. You know what I mean? If you didn't know that your boy, if you got some kids, I got some kids books with some real good messages in them. So y'all might want to tap in. They're all on Amazon. So you know what I mean? This is a perfect platform for me to reach out to my people, let y'all know what I got. And hopefully, you know, y'all want to support it, even if it's something as simple as just a subscribe so that I can know that I got people watching. So when I'm dropping these, y'all can be tapped in and y'all let me know, you know, what I could work on, what topics y'all want to talk about and stuff like that. But I'm really just trying to focus on growing my audience and letting y'all see more of your boy because I got a lot of stuff going on you know what I mean so if you ain't already subscribed make sure y'all hit that subscription button and if you're listening on Spotify like always make sure y'all hit that follow button because that really helps me to you know get my reach and really be able to tap in with y'all because I'm always dropping podcasts I'm always dropping music so I, you know what I mean if you like what you hear make sure y'all tapped in with that so that y'all can be listening right when I drop it you feel me um and if you're trying to grow on, on YouTube a little bit, I would just say, you know, start working, start being consistent, start putting the videos out because you need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours so that you can go to the next level. And that's when you can start getting ads and stuff put on your videos so that you can be able to drop and make money off of these. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna make $100,000 off the first go, but what I will tell you, if you consistent and you start hitting on some of these videos, 100,000, 200,000, you know, watches you're gonna make some money and for some people with lower bills it might even help you to you know be able to be a full-time content creator now i'm not trying to be a content creator only because i'm always going to be moving i'm always going to be figuring out a new plan and stuff like that but i think if i'm going to be making you know like my clothing brand imagination gallery plug you know um this is going to be a perfect spot so when y'all see me rocking my shirts nine times out of ten i'm going to have on imagination gallery just because this is what i like to wear this is what i represent this is what i'm thinking about and putting my time into 
too. So I'm going to be showing y'all so that y'all can be like, damn, I like the shirt. I'm going to cop. And you know what I mean? At least even if you don't cop it, you can say that's a dope shirt and you can go, you know what I mean? Tell somebody who might like it or buy it as a gift for somebody. But yeah, man, start building start showing and start like really focusing on what you're trying to do because youtube is one of the biggest engines the search engines how many times have you went on youtube and was like oh how do you do this or how do you make one of these and youtube is probably nine times out of ten what you type in on your phone to try to watch a video of somebody who might have a little bit more knowledge than you and yeah man so youtube Get into it, do your research, and start recording. You got your phone every day on you nine, nine times out of 10. People got iPhones, they got great cameras. I'm actually shooting on my iPhone right now so you can see, you know, I'm looking good, I'm looking fly, I'm looking clean. So make sure y'all checking it out and make sure y'all using them phones for what they use for. They're not just for Instagram likes and, you know, going on the hub or nothing like that. You can actually make millions of dollars just off of your phone, you know what I mean? So yeah. The last topic that I got for y'all before I get out of here is my favorite topic, and y'all already know, it's the sneakers of the week. Now, I ain't seen no shoes that I really cared about talking about with y'all. I kind of just be throwing what I think is, you know what I mean, a good shoe for the week. I ain't seen nothing this week. So I had seen some news. I don't know how true it is, but I did see that StockX and Walmart, they're going to be collaborating, not even collaborating, they're going to be working together so that they can get Jordans and high, you know, high caliber shoes you're gonna be able to buy them motherfuckers from walmart pretty soon you know what i mean if you want some j's or you want the new new balance or asics or you know what i mean i'm not gonna say Yeezys is gonna be on there we don't know where those gonna be but uh you're gonna be able to tap in some kind of way with walmart whether they you know what i mean get it off the site or they got like an alternative site you can go to and you're gonna be able to get them straight from there now are they gonna sell them at the store no they're gonna be having them online though so that's gonna be you know what i mean i don't know if walmart gonna be able to get it to us cheaper you know what I mean? Or is it just going to be, you know, giving you the prices that they get from StockX and StockX, StockX is going to be able to kind of monitor the prices and let people know what's a fair deal, what's a bad deal, if it's real. But that's another thing. Y'all know that StockX had that problem with selling them, you know, them, them uh, lemony snickets. You feel me? A lot of unfortunate events when people was getting them shoes in the mail. So hopefully this time, you know, if you're getting them through the Walmart or getting them through StockX, people are able to get some authentication on them shoes because nobody's trying to spend two, three hundred dollars on some shoes and then they don't come out right. So like I said, I just heard of this, you know, and it's from, you know, a reliable source that I check my sneakers with. And that's what he was talking. So that's what I'm bringing to y'all. So hopefully, you know, down the line, one, two, three months, we're going to be able to find out a little bit more of that. And I'm going to be tapped in with y'all to let y'all know what I think and let y'all know if I'm going to be purchasing from the wall. Measy. You feel me now? That's all I really got for y'all. So I'm about to get out of here. But until next time, like I said, I'm going to be on here trying to get more content video wise so that y'all can tap in, see your boy, holla at your boy, good in that comment section and let me know. So like I said, make sure y'all subscribe, make sure y'all follow on Spotify or iTunes or however y'all listen to y'all's music because I'm going to be dropping new hits back to back to back like Drizzy. You feel me? So yeah, man, I'm about to get out of here. So until next time, you already know what it is and you know who it is. It's Jolin. It's Varsity. Peace.